Well, good morning and many thanks for allowing me to be part of your Sunday morning this morning. Uh, I'm just uh, overlooking or next to the town of Ballinluig and uh, the river here that runs down towards uh, or bypassing Pitlochry up in Perthshire. I think the mist is coming in and the rain's about to start. I'm just going to share a couple of verses from the book of Revelation and it's chapter number three. It's been written to the church at Sardis by the Lord Jesus and uh, it's a verse that perhaps would make us scratch our head a bit. It seems a bit of a strange thing to say but let's just have a look at what the Lord Jesus says to this church at Sardis. Chapter 3 verse 1, And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know your works, that you have a name, that you live and are dead. And we do look to God to bless his word to us. I suppose it must seem a fairly straightforward uh, matter as to decide whether or not someone is alive or dead. It's a very black and white issue, isn't it? Uh, there's no shades of grey in this one, either alive or dead. And yet for some reason as you go through the New Testament, this distinction between life and death seems to at times be a bit difficult. In fact, there are a number of people who come in contact with the Lord Jesus and the claim is made that they're dead, they're gone, they're finished. And uh, because of that, it's really too late for the intervention of the Lord Jesus. There was a man called Jairus, who was the ruler of the synagogue. He was a man who was absolutely saturated with religion. And his young girl, uh, Jairus' daughter, she was at the point of death. Uh, he had come to find the Lord Jesus as the person who that was in touch with God who could help him when no one else could. And uh, someone came and, and told him she's, she's gone and ab abandoned the task. And yet the Lord Jesus was very clear that she was not dead, she was asleep. Uh, and then there was uh, a man called Lazarus and when the report of his death came through, the Lord Jesus Christ was also adamant uh, that here was someone who was not dead but was asleep. And of course, in both of those occasions, the Lord Jesus Christ is dealing with natural death. He's dealing with men and women who uh, reach the end of, of their natural life, as we all will. And he demonstrates his power to transform the reality of death, the final reality that man, mankind knows. And uh, he is able to go beyond that and to bring them back into life. And as the uh, resurrection and the life, he is the one who is able to go beyond what we might see as the finality and the completeness uh, of, of life. And we see the great power of the Lord Jesus Christ over mankind and his death. But when it comes here to Revelation chapter 3, verse number 1, we're not so much thinking about physical death that the Lord Jesus Christ is able to bring back to life, but we're actually thinking about spiritual death uh, that others are mistaking for life. And so Sardis seems to have something of an identity crisis. They seem to think uh, quite highly of themselves, that they are something special, something different, that they've got it, uh, that they've got this spiritual life, and yet the reality is that in the eyes of the Lord Jesus, as he looks at the reality of their experience, they're, they're falling short of that. Instead of being alive, they are in reality death. What is it that may, would make the difference between spiritual life and spiritual death? Well, as you read down through the uh, letter to Sardis, you find they've discovered truth. Uh, in fact, they seem to have discovered the truth of the Bible. A bit like uh, King Josiah many years before in the Old Testament, who uh, uh, was... Uh, presented with a Bible that had just been discovered in the temple and, and he read it and he preached it or had others preach it and he rediscovered what the, the Word of God said, what the Bible said. But the big problem at Sardis was not so much that they didn't know what God said. They, their, their problem lay in this, they didn't know what God said to them. They hadn't had that personal experience with the God of the Bible and with the truth of God. They knew that the Bible spoke about heaven, spoke about hell, spoke about Jesus. They knew about heaven, uh, they knew about the, the Bible speaking about the God that was the God of creation, the God of ultimate judgment. And they knew about the good news message of the Lord Jesus. They knew about the cross, they knew about his crucifixion, and they'd heard, of course, about his resurrection. They had access to the Gospels. They knew that there was something supremely different in the Lord Jesus. They'd heard about the many uh, prophecies in the Old Testament that had been fulfilled in him, that he was set apart, he was Emmanuel, God with us. He had demonstrated his power over death, his power uh, to deal with sin. He was the one that could 
forgive sin, that could raise the dead, and that he himself had entered into the power of eternal life. They knew all of that. But there seemed to be something of a block. They hadn't had that personal experience of him in a, in, in a meaningful way. What they lacked really was, was, was the Spirit of God. Uh, and in Revelation 3.1, the Lord Jesus Christ presents himself as the one who has the seven spirits. If you want to uh, learn a little bit about that, you go back to Isaiah chapter number 11, and, uh, Isaiah 11 and, and verses 1 and 2, and you would find that the sevenfold Spirit of God is the Spirit of God who brings personal experience. He's a sp Spirit of wisdom and knowledge and understanding and fear of the Lord. In other words, He takes what God says and He applies it to us. It's what God says to me. He brings us into a living, vital experience of the God of heaven. He's not simply the God who is the Creator. He's my Creator. He's not only the God who is the judge of the whole earth. He's, he also then becomes uh, my ultimate judge and the one to whom I am accountable. It's not only that the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross. He died on the cross for me. It's not only that he is the forgiver of sins, he forgave my sins. It's not only that he is the resurrection and the life, he's my hope of eternal uh, life and resurrection. It's not only uh, that he is the one who is able to give salvation, but he is the one who is my Lord and my Saviour. And that it transforms, that makes such a fundamental difference between being spiritually dead, but knowing perhaps what God says in great detail in the Bible, and being spiritually alive, that this word is for me and that I have come into the living benefit of that, uh, trusting the God of heaven and being indwelt and empowered by his Holy Spirit. I do trust that we know him and trust him and enjoy him day by day. Thanks very much for being with me this morning. Thank you.